Hi, friends. Today we are going to continue our conversation on the topic of elevated level of cholesterol. Person contacted me. Her cholesterol is 231. She wants to hire me as a, her health coach, and she wants to know what to do. She went to her primary care physician, and physician said that uh, you are getting prescription for cholesterol low medication, and you also should uh, become vegetarian. So the question is, should I become vegetarian? Should I take a medication? When people like that contact me, um, I usually schedule 15 minutes free conversation before I take the person in as a coach because person may not like the way I work or uh, sometimes um, I feel that the case is too easy and then I'm not going to take person or sometimes I just cannot help a, a person. So I said, well, sorry, cannot help you. So in this particular case, a lady wants to um, to be my uh, client and we are going to talk in this video, should I take cholesterol low medication? Should I become vegetarian? Well, let's go. So I asked her for a little bit more information to give me before we have a first uh, 15 minutes free conversation. She has cholesterol 231. She is a, about 55 years old female. CC stays for chief complaints. Last year, her, her cholesterol was 239. And uh, the, the during that year, she eliminated cheese. She eats cheese very occasionally and small portions. There is no meat in her diet anymore, although fish is there. During this year, she lost about six pounds, although she feels that she never been overweight. She started to feel a little bit tired at, uh, in afternoon. She thinks maybe because she is just getting older. Uh, she does yoga twice per week, walking dog twice per day. She also has a garden that she uh, rakes occasionally. She also become bloated, tries to eat smaller portion and portions. And this is the new symptom that happened in about three to four months. Although her stool is once or twice per day and stable and brown. Uh, family history. Father died at age 78. Uh, the cause of this is stroke. Mother is 83 and still okay. Past medical history. Her cholesterol last year was 239. So you can see it was 239 and it went to 231 with elimination of cheese and meat. I would say this is not the great progress. I would expect that the cholesterol will go lower on on uh, on this diet so she also sent me her laboratory work and that's what is important for us to, for today cholesterol total is 231 ldl which considered bad cholesterol 138 hdl 83 hemoglobin hematocrit within normal limits although on the lower uh, normal level b12 reactive protein homocysteine is not done tsh within normal limits i also like person to tell to um, I asked person to tell me a little bit what she eats for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So breakfast usually varies with about half a cup of full fat yogurt, lunch, vegetarian soup, vegetarian sandwich, uh, could be a green uh, salad with lentils, beans, and uh, also rice. Remember for vegetarians, rice and beans is a source of protein that will give you a full uh, range of amino acids. For dinner, she eats usually either fish or tofu, plus vegetables, could, could be raw or cooked vegetables. Snacks are dry fruits. So let's start to answer the questions. Should she take her cholesterol in medication? Some of su subscri subscribers know that I already made several videos on the topic of cholesterol. And you may know that cholest total cholesterol is this basically sum of LDL, which considered to be a bad cholesterol, and it's supposed to be less than 130, and plus HDL, which is good cholesterol, and it's supposed to be more than 40. So here's your ratio. 231 equals 148 is LDL plus 83. You can see that LDL 148 is a little bit elevated, should be less than 130. However, look at her HDL should be more than 40 and she is hooping 83. I said that I am very happy about this fact. And indeed, I said, if uh, if we are going to talk about cholesterol just as numbers, right? 
the total cholesterol is elevated because your LDL is just a little bit elevated and look how high HDL. So a little bit elevated plus high HDL, the number obviously is going to be elevated. Suppose this is the lower line. Suppose we will bring your uh, HDL, good cholesterol to 45. Are you going to be happier? So a little bit elevated plus a little bit elevated HDL. So you're going to, hit, to have 193. So the cholesterol is not important. And I actually have a video on the topic that numbers are not important. You have to look for, you know, HDL, LDL, inflammation in cardiovascular system and more. So I am not concerned at this point uh, uh, with your uh, 231 total cholesterol. Uh, now, medical profession also prescribes statins for one more reason. They say that it will decrease inflammation in cardiovascular system. So if we assume that her primary decided to uh, give her cholesterol loan medication to decrease inflammation and by doing that to um, prevent a cardiovascular event, why the level of homocysteine is not done? Why C-reactive protein, a cardioreactive protein, will show the inflammation in cardiovascular system and all over the body is not done? So we cannot assess the patient's risk actually, of the cardiovascular event. So all of these numbers is just numbers, right? And oh, indeed, I have this uh, lecture on uh, cholesterol 5A where I talk how unimportant the numbers. You have to look on the level infl of inflammation in cardiovascular system here in cardiovascular plug and all over the body. So please see if you're interested. So the answer to her question, should I take cholesterol loan medication? The answer is no. Why? Level of homocysteine is not done. CRP is not done. We cannot assess the level of inflammation. Family history is not there. Her father died at age 78 from a stroke. But cholesterol loan medication prescribed to patients who have a strong family history. What that means is that there is somebody close, close relative who died at early age from cardiovascular event, meaning at late 40s, in 50s, or early 60s. 78 is not that early. And her mom, by the way, 83 is still alive. Also, her HDL is high. She also is, doesn't have a sedentary lifestyle because she's walking dog and doing yoga. Yes, she has elevated level of LDL. And I suspect the reason for that is because she does not eat complex carbohydrates. When you look at her diet, she eats berries and uh, green salad and cooked, cooked, cooked greens uh, mostly, which a source of simple carbohydrate means that the sugar will spike, then sugar will drop. And in the absence of the sugar, when the muscles are exercising, doing yoga or walking or gardening in, in her case, they need source of energy. And the source of energy is fat. So she makes LDL exactly for that person, uh, for that reason. So LDL are used as a source of energy. And as they give fat to the muscles as a source of energy, they get converted to HDL. And that's why her HDL is high. And I'm very happy about that. So next question. Should I become vegetarian? The answer again, no. Why? Let's talk about that. So um, she went on the diet since last year. Her cholesterol was elevated. She lost uh, six pounds. She, she did it unintentionally. And she feels like she's a little bit on the scene, uh, side now. So, well... I, I don't like that because vegetarian diet, uh, you know, for people, yes, vegetarians will argue it is healthy, but it does not mean that it's for everybody. And there are negative sides of being on vegetarian diet. So people may have osteoporosis, especially females, right? They, they tend to have anemia. Let's look at, at her other symptoms. She has occasionally, she become bloated. 
So she started to eat smaller portion portions, and it's it's a new symptom just happened this year. So my question is, is she bloated? Because look at her diet. Maybe she eats beans, and that's caused the bloat the bloating. Or maybe she eats too much fibers from fruits and vegetables. Look, she eats berries here for lunch is all vegetables. For dinner is vegetables again. Snack is dry fruits. Too much fibers. So she basically creates a dysbiosis. Maybe that's why she is, is bloated. Also, hemoglobin and her hematocrit on the low side. For, um, most of us do much better on red meat, eating red meat and eating um, uh, liver like chicken liver as a source of uh, iron for the, for the red blood cells. So I am suspecting that she is actually become low on iron because of her diet. Although on her laboratory work, B12 is not done. So maybe that's why she's tired. Uh, total protein, uh, what I will do for this, uh, for this patient, if she was my patient, total protein, serum, serum, albumin, and globulin. Maybe that's the cause of her tiredness. So I just don't know. Uh, and I have this wonderful lecture on my YouTube channel where I talk about differential diagnosis of the tightness. So please see. Bottom line is, it seems to me for the, for this person, going vegetarian, eliminating uh, completely fish is not such a good idea. So I said no to both. No to cholesterol low medication and no on going on vegetarian diet. Now, I want just to say, Pan Mose, I feel that we as a healthcare practitioner sometimes do disservice to our patients or to our clients. When we say something, like in this particular case, we recommend, the, uh, to, the person was recommended to go on vegetarian diet without providing adequate information how vegetarian diet supposed, or good vegetarian diet supposed to look like. Because from my point of view, the, whatever she eats is not a good vegetarian diet. Okay, so people become unhealthy. That's why I told person, no, your it is starting drugs, no uh, going on vegetarian diet, and um, I'm not going to take you as a, as my client because you are too easy. You you just need to figure out how to eat healthy, and if your cholesterol is going to be a little bit elevated, then live with that there is no reason for you to go and take medications or go on vegetarian diet okay guys if you have any questions please ask me here like subscribe bye bye for now